Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Vector, VectorVest YouTube live stream, Trending Thursday. My name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Always my pleasure to be here, and holy smokes, we got a lot of people in the room. Man, this thing is just getting more and more popular, and thank you all for making that happen. Definitely humbled and blessed uh, that you guys are here, and man, I, I, can't, I can't express enough um, how happy I'm glad that you guys are here. Sitting right side of me is Joey. Hi, Joey. Hi. He's my super producer. He's in the background making sure everything works. Um, we are actually one of the people who have been lucky so far with the streams, no problems with the streams, as I knock on wood to make sure we keep that going. Um, so, man, a lot to discuss today. For those of you who are new, welcome. And what do we do here on Trending Thursday? We look at stocks that are making the news. We use the power of the VectorVest software to analyze those stocks and get a better feel if the news stories are good, bad, or indifferent, and we have no bias in any direction. You see, you see the stories? I go out to a lot of different, about five different uh, news resources to help me to find these stocks that are making the news, put them together for you. And again, the VectorVest software does all of the work to determine whether or not uh, the stock is good, bad, or indifferent. And we have a lot of little different watch lists based upon a lot of things that are going on. We all know that COVID-19 is locking the world down, all right? It is what it is, but as investors in the market, you don't have to be afraid. What you will do is let the market come to you and trade how the market uh, what the market gives to you. You know, you heard if the market or the, uh, if you get lemons, make lemonade. Well, if you get bad or good days, trade the bad or good days. And if you need to sit on the sidelines to wait for a more uh, confirmed move in the market, don't be afraid to do that. Why? Because cash is a position. Keep that in mind. So you don't always have to feel just because you got money on the sidelines doesn't mean you always have to have it in the market. But if you're a little bit more aggressive on the up days, play the market up on the down days, play the market down. And that's the kind of market we're in. We're in a volatile market. So talking about that, we're going to jump into the VectorVest software because we always talk about what's going on in the market first before we even start to look at the news. Why? Because market timing is important. Important. You need to know the right time to be in the market and the right time to be out of the market. And right now, with all of the volatility in the market, the up days, the down days, the up days, and the down days, it's really hard to establish a definitive trend in the market, but the VectorVest software will help you nonetheless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right into the VectorVest software, go to our homepage. That's not the one I want. I want, which one I want, Drew? That is the one I want? Okay, so we're going to go to the home. Uh, this is the one they want. All right, so here's the home page of the VectorVest software. For many of you who are not subscribers to the software, a couple of things. One, we're going to put a link in the chat box so that you can click on it to take a trial of the VectorVest software, number one. Number two, before we get started, I also want to let you know, we are giving away something today. We are giving away one of our courses, one of our live courses, especially for those who are very interested in options, we're going to give away today an, an options jump starter course, all right? If you stay until the end of this presentation, I will tell you how to, um, to register to, uh, to possibly be a winner for that course. It is like a $500 course that today I have the authority to give away for free. So if you stay with us to the end, I will tell you how to register for it. And next week, you got to come back next week to see who wins. All right. One other thing before we get started, if you like this presentation, please comment, like, and subscribe. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Hit the subscribe button down below, below this video. Hit the subscribe button. Is it below the video, Joey? All right, below this video, click the subscribe button because a lot of people who are here are not subscribers to the channel. We're still trying to grow the channel. We hit our milestone of 10,000 subscribers. We're still trying to grow it. So if you haven't yet, take a quick second, look below the video and hit the subscribe button. All right, with all of that being said, this is the homepage of the VectorVest software, all right? And it gives you a lot of great information as to what's going on in the market day over day and gives you a little bit of a 
oh, stoplight or traffic light into the market. Let's start off with the market timing gauge at the top. The market timing gauge is our daily traffic light into the market. Right now, the color guard is neutral and it's straight up in the yellow. What do you do when you get to a yellow light? Well, I'm from Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, we run that thing before it gets to be red. Now, many of you who are not from Brooklyn, Jay's, Jay's probably here. He's probably from Brooklyn. He is here? All right, so Jay, Jay from New York, he knows you run that light before it turns red. But most of all, when you get to a yellow light, you slow down. Same kind of scenario today. Today is a day you slow down because the VectorVest program does not advocate buying any stocks at this time. Now keep in mind, that's a longer term view. If you're a more of a aggressive investor in the market, let's go look at our quick list of the indices. We're now back at a mixed market. The market was down this morning, it went up and it came back down to a mixed market now. This is definitely an example of the volatility that's going on in the market. And the home page of this software sets the table for you to know what's going on throughout the day. You can catch the swings throughout the day, whether you're bullish or bearish or back and forth. Why? Because this is a trader's market, folks. This is a time where you take advantage of an up day, take advantage of a down day the next day and vice versa, back and forth. This is the kind of market that we're in, all right? So as we can see, all of the major indices, well, the Dow is slightly down, the NASDAQ slightly down, the S&P is slightly up, and our vector vest composite is slightly down as well. Let's talk about the vector vest composite. The vector vest composite is an indexed arithmetic average of all of the stocks that we track, and currently we track 8,182 stocks. For those of you who are not subscribers, you will not find this indicator any place else in the market. It's our indicator that tracks the move of 8,182 stocks. We feel that it is a better representation of broad market movement, and we use it for market timing. Now, when we say market timing, it's not market prediction. We follow the trend of the market and keep you guys on the right side of the trend from a market timing perspective. We're the only ones out there, I believe, that actually do time the market. And we've got seven, seven different market timing calls to help any type of investor get in and out of the market at the right time. Let's move over to our color guard. Our color guard is a better view of a traffic light, not on a day over day basis, but uh, overall over the last six trading days. We can clearly see from this traffic light, we've got more yellow than anything, just like we have on the market timing gauge. This tells me overall in my portfolio, I should be tightening stops on any positions I'm in, whether I'm bullish or bearish because the market's been up and down. No matter what side of the market I'm on, this is a good time to shorten or tighten the stops on your uh, positions you're in. The market, uh, the color guard tracks three of our market timing indicators, the price of the composite, which I just talked about, RT, which looks at the short-term price trend of the market. Is the market in an uptrend or not? Because this indicator is cast on a scale between zero and two, when RT is above one, the market's in an uptrend. And when the RT is below one, like it has been for the last six trading days, the market's in a downtrend. And then we have an indicator that looks at the overall health of the market. That is the BSR or buy to sell ratio. If you want to know more about how each and every one of these indicators work, I would suggest that you take an opportunity to take a trial to the software uh, for 30 days. We'll explain these indicators every single night. All right. So that is... Okay, that is what's going. Joey was waving at me. I don't know why he was waving at me. Joey, stop waving at me. Wow, I don't know what's going on with Joey. I'm to use this he's he's got he's got this stay at home thing right now, and I think he's a little bit. So you stay over there, Joey, and you do your thing. Just stop waving at me. All right. So to stop, he's waving at me again, folks. So with all of that being said, this is what's going on in the market. On an up day, good time to take a night or take advantage of the market to the upside. Down day, good time to take market uh, take advantage of the market to the downside. Let's talk about our first news story. All right, now that we've got a feel of what's going on in the market, let's talk about what I do. Is this a, this one, Joey? This one or this one? No, this one. All right. So here's our first. Because we're talking about the market, let's talk about what's going on in the market and why the market is moving the way it is. Uh, the first story is how Mnuchin became Washington's indispensable crisis manager. If we scroll down, 
Um, at a World Economic Forum dinner in Davos, Switzerland, the Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin spoke up. It was 45 minutes into the conversation about climate change and trade, and no one had mentioned the most important issue facing the world. He said the deadly new virus, uh, deadly new coronavirus spreading across China. Mr. Mnuchin told the dinner guests he was worried that the crisis could undermine global growth. And you know something? It is. The virus is shutting down countries, not just cities, not just states, but countries worldwide. All right. Earlier that day on January 23rd, Chinese officials said they were cutting transport in and out of Wuhan, the epicenter of the public health crises. So this story was done on March 31st as an idea of how the Fed is feeling in regards to the COVID-19. Now, you know, the stimulus package has been sent out, right? So the government to begin sending stimulus payments in the next three weeks. For many of you who are adversely affected by the coronavirus, uh, the payments will provide $1,200 to most adults and $500 for children under 17. So I know many people who are being affected by this are definitely looking for it. But the story is out there. The government will begin sending out stimulus payments to households in the next three weeks. This story was done on March 30th and will distribute them automatically with no action required for most people. So it looks like the IRS will be putting this money directly into your account, especially if, if you get a refund from the government. Uh, they should have your direct deposit information. Now, I don't know what that's going to mean, uh, but some seniors and others who typically don't file returns will need to submit a simple tax return to receive the economic impact payments, the Treasury and the Internal Revenue Service said in an announcement. So for those of you who have not filed or don't file electronically and actually mail it in, uh, they, it may take them a little longer to get their money. But the, it's on the way. See, this is New York. This is the Brooklyn. That's the one, two, and three. That's actually to take you out to the Bronx, too. Um, to the Bronx, yeah. I know, especially out to Yankee Stadium. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know where Yankee Stadium is now. I haven't been there since they moved it. I think it's like real close to each other, though. All right, so keeping that in mind, and last thing, how about the unemployment numbers? March job reports unlikely to show full impact of the coronavirus. And guess what? This was this story was put out on what day was this done? March 30th. Numbers came out today, which was double what the numbers were last week. All right. So the uh, the jobless claims went up to six point six million from three point two eight million last week. And you know something? As this goes on, that number is going to continue to grow until the com the country and uh, the globe gets out of um lockdown. So this is a, a hard time for a lot of people. Uh, it is a way of trying to stay safe and not spread the coronavirus. But with that being done, um, trying to stay safe doesn't put money in your pocket. Thus, the two, the $2 trillion bill was sent out, uh, put together, and that's that. So those are the three things, three stories that I have out about what's affecting the market. Let's go take a look at the market in the VectorVest software. We'll go to the market timing graph. Remember I talked to you about the vector vest composite? Well, this is that vector vest composite now shown on a one-year graph. This is the movement of over 8,100 stocks. And again, we use it for market timing. For those of you, if this is your first time here, we started getting our customers out of the market round about the February 24th time period. If you don't believe it, take a trial. Take a trial and go to our nightly newsletter where you start to see when we started guiding our customers out of the market prior to all of this move to the downside. So again, don't take my word for it because I'm just a guy on YouTube, right? Don't take my word for it. But if you take a trial and go look at the data and the information we gave and listen to some of the people that are in the room, all right? I'm not watching the chat right now. Joey's doing that for me. But folks who are subscribers, let the people who are in the room who are not subscribers, tell them, and I'm putting myself out there right now, tell them what VectorVest did for you prior to all of the coronavirus scare coming in to where we are right now. So we see the market pull back, and this is what I keep confirming or, or uh, referring to as 
a perceived bottom which occurred on March 23rd of 2020. The market fell and then for three days in a row the market went up. The market's doing a little bit of a sideways mumbo. Yesterday the market fell. Today the market did a little bit of more fallation. Right now we're a little bit mixed on the day. But this is the perceived bottom. I don't know if we're going to test this. All of, you know what you know what I think, and I'm going to you know I don't usually go and do this, but I'm thinking that as more deaths occur globally, I think that that may push markets further down a little bit more. Even though the Fed is very accommodative right now to try to stave off a recession, which you know it takes two quarters for a recession to know that we're in a recession. But the market, but the Fed has already said, and I talked about that last week, they've got the spigots wide open to give whatever the markets need uh, to keep us from going further, further down. But the market is pulling back a little bit right here. Um, and that's where we stand. I'm going to close, I'm not going to close this out. I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to bring back into the software. I'm going to also look at another something that we look at. Let's go to our viewers tab. Go to the watch list viewer. Let's go open up our watch list for today. YouTube trending Thursday. What's today? 4-1. There it is. And the, here's the listing of the stocks that we're going to talk about today. But the two main ones we look at for the market are the SPY and the VVC. There they are. Now let's look at those on the... Whoops. How'd that happen? Let's go look at those on a graph. Oh, view the stock graph. There's the vector vest composite again. I'm zooming in. There's that move over. I am looking at a three and an eight exponential moving average. How about yesterday's activity? The three and the eight did cross on the market, giving us more of a bearish feel. I like that we bounced the three and the eight cross. We did a little bit of sideways mumbo. Yesterday's activity, we went back bullish, sorry, bearish in the market. The S&P did the same thing. Bounce, three days in a row went up. Three and the eight cross, yay! What did we hit? A level of resistance at two, uh, 262.56. And what did we do? Bounce back down. You'll, also, you'll always hear me say, when I'm watching a stock, I want to see it break through resistance. This is the reason why. Because if this is a good level of resistance, the market should retrace the same thing on an individual stock. And that's why I look for stocks to break through levels of resistance before I pull the trigger. All right, so that's about the market. Joey, any questions? Uh, no questions. No questions. Way to go. All so. A lot of people agreeing with me. All right, well, I appreciate that. But that's where we stand as far as the market is concerned right now. You know, whether it's the SPY or the Vector Vest Composite, let's go see if we've got more legs coming off of this low back here and see if we can break through this level of resistance. That would show more continuity of coming off of a low and still moving higher. Thus, the reasons on every graph I look at, I always look at support and resistance. And guess what? For those of you who are not subscribers, VectorVest automatically draws these lines for me. I don't know if there's any other graphing package that does that, but VectorVest will look at my time frame and will automatically draw levels of support and resistance. All right, let me close out of that. And with no, if there's no questions, let's get to the next story. The next story is talking about COVID-19 stocks. So you know something, and I, I don't like to look at it this way, but you know, with all of the badness going along with COVID-19 stocks, COVID-19 stocks may be a great way to make some money. There is a watch list that I've created. I know that Tom is in here. Tom had made a comment not too long ago about he opened up that watch list uh, uh, one day, looked at the stocks that were moving, was able to make a lot of money in a day. Remember, we're in a trader's market, and the watch list that I'm about to show you could get you on top of on an end for on, on each and every day, which COVID-19 stocks are moving. Now, this one looks at three COVID-19 proof biotech stocks. I'm going to scroll down and let's get into the stocks. They're in my watch list. All right, let's scroll down. The first one was Alexion Pharmaceuticals. The stock is down approximately 30% from its highs earlier this year and sports uh, a market capitalization of just under 19 billion. It's franchise products of Solaris, which is a blockbuster drug. This company is methodically transitioning patients over to a recently approved ultramarinosis. 
These two drugs should do approximately 4.8 billion of the approximate five and a half billion of overall revenue for the company. Wow. All right, so that's one stock. Let's go down. The next stock should be Excellus. When this stock got below $15 recently, someone added to the exposure substantially via buy right orders. The shares have bounced a bit since then, but it's still approximately 25% below their levels in late February. The company has a market cap just above $5 billion. So that's stock number two. And let's go down to the third stock, which is Fold. Amicus Therapeutics has several things to recommend it. Like the other names in this article, the shares are down some 25% from their highs in February. The company ended fiscal year 2019 with over $450 million in cash. That's a lot of money in cash on the balance sheet. So it has no need to raise foreseeable funding until long after this current crisis is in the rearview mirror. So Fold is a very interesting one in which, as a pharmaceutical, it's got a lot of money in cash reserves. All right, let's go back into the software. Let's go back to my watch list. Here's the three stocks that I'm looking at, ALXN, uh, Fold, and EXEL. Here's the three. Let's analyze them real quick. Alexion, undervalued. That's a good thing. Amicus, way over its value, which doesn't make it a bad thing. It just means people are willing to pay a premium to own the stock. That's perceived value. And then Excellus also over its value. We give a value to every stock every day. It's what we feel the stock is currently worth. Value looks at earnings. It looks at earnings growth rate. It looks at a lot of other things so that we can put what we perceive the value to be, and we would rather than have you in an undervalued stock, but two of them are overvalued. Next indicator, RV, the upside potential. This stock, Alexion, has good upside potential because this indicator is cast on a scale between zero and two. All right, relative value looks at a stock's long-term price appreciation potential. It's long-term potential as compared to a AAA corporate bond. Over the next one to three years, this stock should outperform that AAA corporate bond by 46%. Amicus, RV below one. This stock does not have good upside potential. This is not a stock that I really want to hold long term. And the same thing with Excellus does not have good upside potential. Safety. Well, safety looks at uh, an indicator of how risky the stock is. It looks at the consistency and predictability of a company's financial performance. Well, at uh, that value between zero and two, above one is favorable. Alexion has good safety. Amicus or Fold does not. Excellus is right on the cusp at one. Now, the last thing about analyzing the stock, is it in an uptrend or not? Alexion's RT, relative timing, looks at the short-term price trend of the stock. This is below the value of one, so the stock overall is in a downtrend, whereas Amicus is moving up. Even though the fundamentals, RV and RS, are not good, the stock is in an uptrend, and Excellus has an RT below one, also in a downtrend. Looking at the earnings, uh, the earnings growth, Excellus grows their earnings at a negative value. Fold at a negative value and growth for Alexion is at 23%. Overall, as I look at these stocks, I like Alexion a little bit better. Undervalued, good upside potential, decent safety, not going up in price right now, but does grow their earnings at a clip of 23%. Let's go look at the graphs, all right? So these are the three stocks. All right, there's Alexion. Look at that bounce on Alexion. Remember, I said that one is the one that I like the most. Here's the earnings per share. It's rising. Volume is starting to fall off a little bit. Volume is conviction. I'd rather have you in a stock that's going up with volume going up as well. All right, so right now, the three and the eight are still above. The three is above the eight. I would say leave it alone if you own it. If you don't own it, make sure you buy it with a buy stop limit order on an up day, not on a down day. But overall, I love that bounce coming off of that level of support and the earnings to back it up. Fold, on the other hand, bounce, but pulling back down. Earnings is negative. Earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. Volume is pretty steady, though, uh, moving you know pretty steady sideways. But watch the earnings and look at the pullback on the stock. I like the stock as soon as it takes out this level of a prior high with that big wick. That happens to be a shooting star pattern. 
um, from a candlestick perspective with follow through and the stock is still pulling back a little bit. And the last one is Excel. Wow, definitely moving down. If I draw a trend line, look at that. Look at that. Now, interesting in that with this trend line, the stock's price did break above, but look at where it's coming back. Down to this trend line, if it goes below that trend line, the stock would still be in a downtrend from that high. Earnings went flat. Good Gordon, Jim. And volume is starting to pull back a little bit as the stock is pulling back. I'm not sure I like Excel. If I'm going to look at any one of these threes, it would be a Lexion, but I would buy it on an up day, not on a down day. So those are those three stocks. I'm going to do one other thing. We do have uh, the coronavirus stock list, which is right here. Man, how many stocks we got in there? If we open it up, it's going to tell me that I've got 34 stocks. All right. Um, when you get to the replay of this, Take my head off for a second, Joey. When we get back to the replay of this, you can take a picture of this and build your own watch list of these stocks. There we go. So I'm going to, uh, you can take a picture of that right there. And then I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Let me get the rest of them. There we go. And you can take a picture of that as well. There's all 34 stocks. And one of the things is I mentioned Tom did you can, oh, once you've built this watch list, put them all together and sort by which ones are moving up the most throughout the day. Look at percent price change. How about you jump on board with the stocks? These two stocks right there have been some of the hottest stocks on good updates, Codex and Moderna. How about being able to take advantage of those early in the morning and take advantage of only the ones that are moving up or look at the stocks that have the biggest uptrend, sorting by RT. Those are the stocks. Look at that. Not only is Moderna going up, nicely today, but it's in the strongest uptrend. That is the power of using a vector vest watch list and taking these stocks, building your own watch list. If you're not a subscriber, take a trial. You can do that. Watch the video again once Joey updates it and puts it out there. You can build this same watch list of stocks. All right, so those are my coronavirus stocks. Any questions, Joey? I'm a new subscriber. I'd like to know how the basic analysis holds up for an ETF. It seems to me that the program is only designed for individual stocks. By basic analysis, I mean RV, RS, RT, and VST. All right, so the question is, as a new subscriber, how do we analyze ETFs? Now, the, the answer to that is when I look at an ETF and you look at relative value and relative safety on an ETF, you'll see their values at one. When you look at the stock's price and the value, they will be equal. Why is that? Because an ETF tracks either an index or a group of stocks. It makes it very hard to put indicators like relative value and relative safety on those stocks or on those ETFs because there's a lot of moving parts in there, especially if it tracks a group of stocks. Stocks keep coming in and going out, and it's hard to assign a relative value or a relative safety to those, number one. Number two, how do you analyze or use ETFs, whether bullish or bearish? You look at RT. Look to see if the RT on that ETF is above one and in an uptrend. That's how you use the VectorVest software to trade an ETF. It is strictly off of RT, strictly off of RT. What's moving the fastest? All right. Any other questions, Joey? Um, the guy asked, which layout are we using? Uh, the question is, what layout are we looking at when we look at graphs? And the thing is, I have a specific layout. You may not have it. What I'm looking at simply, I'm looking at three and eight exponential moving averages. Okay, number one. Number two, I am looking at support and resistance. Number three. I'm looking at earnings per share. And number four, I'm looking at volume. That's what sets up the graph that I'm looking at. And most times when I look at a graph, I'm looking at a three month graph because what happens every three months? Earnings. I wanna make sure that the earnings picture is in the graph that I'm looking at because that's the biggest mover of a stock's price. All right, anything else? Does RT work on leverage inverse ETFs? Does uh, RT work on leverage inverse ETFs? Yes. RT works on every ETF, whether it's leverage, non-leverage, um, it works. RT is the indicator that you're looking at when you're looking at ETFs, whether inverse or regular.
do you recommend we always use exponential moving average for typical usage? So the question is, do we typically recommend using exponential moving averages when we're looking at graphs? Um, there's three moving averages. There's a simple, exponential, and weighted. And the simple tracks price the furthest. The exponential is right in the middle. It does a really good job of tracking price to get you in and out at the right time, whereas weighted tracks price even closer, which will get you in and out a little faster. I like the middle of the road one, which is the exponential. It gives me a little bit more room to get in or out of the stock. So exponential is what we like to use here. But if, you're, if you like the simple or the weighted, you can do either or uh, any of those. Personally, though, we like the exponential because it's nicely in the middle. Does RT change intraday? Does RT change intraday? Absolutely. If you have real-time data, the RT values will change as the stock changes throughout the day. Yes. All right, so that's all of the questions. Thank you for those questions. Uh, those are great questions, and thank you, Joey, for monitoring the chat for me as well. Let's get back to our watch list, and as we do that, we're going to jump into our next story. Interesting. We're all home. A lot of us are home. And so I've got uh, an opinion. What's worth streaming in April 2020? The Good Fight, Bosch, Money Heist, and more. So with, and here it says, with many of us stuck at home, at least there's a good crop of streaming distractions on the way. And it's interesting, as I'm watching all of the streaming services, they are putting out a lot of content left and right. My wife and I were looking at uh, TV the other night, and whether you want to laugh or not, we want to see Trolls. We want to see the new movie Trolls, which is due to come out next Friday. We noticed that not only is it coming out next Friday, but it's coming out on demand the same day it's being released into the movies. And I think you're going to see a lot more of that because people can't go to the movie theater, right? So I'm going to, sh I'm going to think that as movies come out, they're going to automatically start coming out right on demand on the days that they get released. But keeping that in mind, uh, we have stocks that we're looking at here, Netflix, Amazon, Viacom, Disney, Apple, Comcast are all the stocks that are tracking streams. So today is not stream wars, but because a lot of people are at home, um, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out. Um, how to get Disney out? I'm not looking for that. And then it gives you in this story, I like this story, how much you pay for Netflix, how much you pay for Hulu how much you pay for Amazon. And folks, when you start putting this all together, these start adding up. And guess what? Everything that I just looked at with the exception of Hulu, I have. Um, I'm a big Star Trek fan, so I have CBS All Access. I have Amazon. Uh, I have um, Apple TV Plus. I have Disney. I have all of these. I, again, with the exception of um, Hulu, Peacock, free for Comcast, and I'm not a Comcast subscriber. I subscribe to Spectrum, but I just found out on my Spectrum. You have Spectrum? No, you have at and I just found out on my Spectrum, I am now getting um, Showtime and something for free. All right, so man, look at that. Even your cable companies know that you're home, and they're giving you some premium services. So far, I think for the next three months on, on Spectrum, I'm getting two premium channels. And man, they are trying to keep us in front of the TV as much as possible. Thus, why this story is so important, because some of these stocks are worth getting into, right? Let's go open up my watch list, and let's go look at those stocks. So what's in here? We have Amazon. We have, um, where's, where's the rest of my, where's the rest of them? Oh, hold on. We got Amazon. Man, oh, I have a watch list. Oh, and you know why I have a watch list? I have a watch list that specifically looks at stay-at-home stocks, and a lot of them are in there. So I'm going to bring up that stay-at-home stocks, all right? And in there, you know, when you look at things like Teams, you look at Zoom, here's Amazon, um, here's Teams. You know something that's moving else as well? Grubhub. Man, I am in Grubhub personally. I am in Blue Apron Personally, here's uh, Facebook. Uh, uh, sorry, Netflix. Here's um, 
Facebook, Activision for you people who are gaming, Zoom video. We're doing a lot of Zoom video for church because we can't go to church. So a lot of that is happening. Man, there's a lot of stocks in here. And hold on, I don't have Disney in here, do I? No, I'm gonna add that to my watch list. Disney, uh, A-P-P-L, A-A-P-P-L, I know, A-A-P-L. I need to add those. And yeah, because, so it's not about the stream wars this week when we look at the streaming stocks, but it is all of a lot of the stocks that are uh, put into the people who are staying at home and how they are being affected. So you know something? Let's sort the list by RT. I love using Vector Vest um, watch list to do this kind of stuff. What's, uh, what stock in my stay at home watch list is moving up the most? Blue Apron. I am currently in that stock. With Clorox, why? Because people are having to clean a lot of stuff. Clorox is in there. Netflix is in there. Um, in the top five of RT, is top five of one of the, of the fastest moving stocks in there. And you can also see which ones have buy recommendations, which ones have earnings growth rate that are double digit. Disney is in here, but towards the bottom, Disney is not moving up as fast. Let's go see which stocks have the, are the safest in this list. Apple, Apple, everybody knows about Apple. I love Apple. I still think it's one of the best stocks in the whole wide world. But look at the fundamentals on Apple. RV above one, relative safety above one. What's hurting Apple right now that it's going down? But I'm thinking, uh, you remember not too long ago, uh, the earnings growth rate on uh, Apple was at one because they put so much money into their streaming service. How about they're starting to see, rep they're starting to see that go back up? I'm loving that. All right, stock is still a sell. I would buy it on an update, but I would really look for RT to go back above one. All you gaming folks out there, how about Activision in an uptrend? Nice, uh, all three indicators above the value of one. Love it. How about, what's another one? How about JD.com? All three, relative value, relative safety, relative timing, all above one. What else is in this list with all three? That's about it. So here's your stay-at-home stocks including some of the uh, streaming stocks that are in here. Ray wants to know what's a good, cheap, stay-at-home stock. Can you sort that by price? Um, what's a good, cheap, stay-at-home stock? Let's go sort it by price. $6 was the cheap one. Zynga, I actually own this right, as right now as well. Um, let's take a look at that, uh, Kareem. Let's go take a look at the stock. Let's go see if it's something you would want to get in right now. Little volatility on that stock, right? Put that on a three-month graph. I got into it when the 3 and the 8 cross. Right now, it's moving down a little bit. I wouldn't pull the trigger on it right now, Kareem. All right, just think about it. Look at these three red candles. I would wait for the stock to bounce. I like that the 3 and the 8 are still bullish, even on the pullback. Watch the earnings per share. Be careful with that. I know that Zynga is a trade because earnings per share is going down. But I like that it bounced off a level of support, the 3 and the 8 cross. Look at that opportunity to make money on a lower dollar stock. Right now, keep your eyes on it. All right, keep your eyes on it. As I mentioned, I own it, but I have a stop in place in case it goes down. I'm not going to let it get away from me. But I would definitely think about buying it again once it starts going up uh, and the 3 and the 8 continue to move up. Another one in here, Tencent Music is about a $10, $11 stock. View the stock graph. Let's take a look at it. I like that a little bit more better. A little bit more better, Kareem. Look at that. Found the floor. Bounce. Look at the 3.8. Look at the beautiful update today. This is more of a trade as well because look at the earnings per share. But here's an inexpensive stay-at-home stock uh, that you might want to keep your eyes on. And again, you make sure you buy it on an update. Because it's a $10.95 stock, I would say put in your order five cents higher than the high. That helps to make sure you've got confirmation of up move on the stock. All right. Any other questions? How many bars on your support and resistance? How many bars on my support and resistance at all? Looking at, let's do this real quick. If I go to support and resistance and right click on it and go down to change settings, I am looking at 300 bars. I'm looking at 300 bars, which is about a one year look back period. All right. So I'm using the default layout on support and resistance when I have support and resistance. For those of you who are new, you can adjust your support and resistance to reflect however tight or responsive you want your support or resistance to be. Any other questions, Joey? Uh, yeah, um, let them know that they may need, may need to refresh their 
browser. Right now, um, something's going on. You may need to refresh your browser to make sure that you're still watching this live. All right, if your screen is blurry, refresh your browser. Refresh your browser. Thank you, Joey. No but Kareem, TME might be a good opportunity right now. Any other questions? Um, yeah. I use high RS in the retirement section. I need a confirmed up to put my money back into work. See you in what, 2022? All right, so you, if you are a longer term investor, you definitely are looking for a confirmed up. It'll happen. It'll happen when it does. Go rock and roll, especially with your high relative safety stocks. How do you get the earnings per share view? How do you get your earnings per share on the graph? What you do is you go to add parameter to the top right. Once you do that, we'll go to the capital appreciation. And if you don't have earnings per share here, you will pop it up. You'll see here, you click on it, it will add it to uh, your side uh, parameters on the side over here. Any other questions, Joey? Um, what kind of stop order do you usually use? I think you, you know. One other stop order, you know, on a, on a stock, especially in the current markets conditions right now, if I use the three and the eight to get in, I tend to use the three and the eight to get out. Because this is a trader's market, I'm going to get in and time my trades on a 3-8 move and like this one, TME, this was an opportunity to get in on a 3-8 cross and an opportunity to get out on a 3-8 cross. You probably finished about flat on the stock. Once you stayed out though, you could have, if it had options, play it, 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 you would have made a lot of money all the way down if this was an optionable stock. But I tend to use the 3 and the 8 to get in and to get out. Any other questions, Joey? Dividend stocks in jeopardy of not paying out? Ah, good question. Are many dividend stocks in jeopardy of not paying out? Um, you won't know that until it comes time to pay out the dividend. Um, we do have an indicator in the software called dividend safety. And when that number is above 50, you can tie that into the software. If, you, if uh, that number is above 50, it's a high probability that the stock will continue to at least pay its dividend or raise it. All right, but that is something that we do have in the software to take a look at. Joey? Can you buy with your software or do you need an outside broker like Ameritrade, E-Trade, or Robin? So the question is, can you buy through the software as a broker? We are not a broker, but we do have three broker partners. We are linked up with Ally, with uh, Interactive Brokers, and with TradeStation, and we have a tool in the software called RoboTrader where you can trade directly from the VectorVest software to one of our three partner brokers. But the VectorVest software is not a brokerage, so you can't directly trade through the software. You still need a brokerage. But through RoboTrader and our three partner brokers, you can trade directly from the software to our partner brokers. Any other questions? Yeah, Paul's asking, how about explaining which graph layout you're using and why that layout? The question is, is what graph layout am I using? The graph layout that I'm using is not in one of our saved layouts. I created this layout where I'm looking at moving averages, where I'm looking at support and resistance, where I'm looking at earnings and I'm looking at volume. Why do I do that? Well, I always want to see where a stock's price is, trend, is trading between support and resistance. Is it, in this case, bouncing off of support? Or in this case, retracing from resistance? I like to use moving averages, don't matter what moving averages you use, but some semblance of an opportunity to get in or out of a stock. So that's why I like to use moving averages. Because I know that earnings is the engine that drives a stock's price higher, that's why earnings is always on the graph to help me determine whether this is going to be a trade or a longer term hold. If I'm going to get into a stock that's rising, I'd rather buy into a stock that's rising with rising earnings. But if I get into a stock that's rising with falling earnings, because engine is the, the earnings is the engine that drives a stock's price higher, I know that this would be more of a trade. Hopefully that makes sense. And not only that, volume is conviction. And if I'm buying into a stock, I want rising volume. That tells me that people are supporting that stock to drive its stock price higher. So that is my layout, and this is why I choose what I choose. Anything else, Joey? Yeah, there's a couple more. Okay. Um, so do you sell it open next day if the eight is greater than three? I am placing a stop order at low 0.5% and hope the order will 
not be executed. Is that okay? All right. So when you go to put in your order the next day, if the three is if the eight is above the three, I'm looking to see if the market if the stock is still falling the next day. If it is, I tend to get out with a market order. All right. Now, if I'm trying to put in an order of before time, then I am going to look at a line in the sand. If I need a hard line price to get in and out. I am going, oops, I'm going to put in a line in the sand. I'm going to look, let's like, see right here. The stock's price is going up. Well, my line in the sand is going to be this current level of support. If the stock was moving higher, 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 I would look based upon the level of resistance or a prior level of resistance to use as a line in the sand. So if I need to look at a hard price, I draw a line in the sand. And in this case, my stop would be that level of the lower level of support or I will use the three and the eight on an end of day, and I will wait to the next day to place the order, and most likely I'm going to put it in as a market order because I need to get out of that stock. I'm going to take one more question, folks, because I got a lot going on. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Fiche said that Quest Trade is in Canada. They can trade through that. That's yeah. also, that's a comment that you can, in Canada, we do have a partner broker called Quest Trade. Absolutely. Thank you for reminding me about that. Is there a fee on you through brokers? Uh, the question is, is there a fee through us on brokers? Right now, brokers are not, are not charging any commission, so there is no fee. All right, whether it is a question or not more, I've got to keep moving. I thank you for the questions, and I'm doing the best that I can to answer as many of them, but folks, we still got a lot to cover, all right? So again, um, as time goes along and Joey puts these videos up, you can always ask questions there or you can give our product support staff a call. Don't forget, folks, with all of these questions, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. If you are here for the first time, look below this video, you will see the subscribe button. Please click on it. That way you will be alerted the next time that we go out live again. And if you wanna stay on top of that so you're never late or you don't miss it, subscribe to the channel, please. All right, let's get to the next story. Next story. Coronavirus roundtable, man, look at this, the pain in the travel sector, sizing up the pain in the travel sector. Last week, I showed you my travel stocks. You wanted to have resorts and you wanted to have uh, cruises on there. So I did add those to my travel stocks. So this one is going to be the story. No sector has been more affected by coronavirus and the battle against it. Uh, than the travel sector. They are getting hurt. You look at the hotels, you look at the airlines, you look at the Caribbean, not the Caribbean, but uh, the ship lines, they are getting adversely affected because nobody can stay. You know, you got to keep six feet apart from each other. So the coronavirus is really hurting. The question isn't whether the industry will suffer, but for how long? How big and how much will help, it, uh, how much help will it get? We ask a group of marketplace authors for their take on ahead and what you might call the biggest industry in the world. So I don't have a specific stock to look at for this, but we do have a watch list specifically for travel stocks. All right. And we're going to go to that. Here it is. Travel stocks. And in here we have hotels. We have airlines, we now have cruises, and we have resorts. So I've now got 37 stocks that make up the travel stocks. Uh, Royal Caribbean is in here, Car Carnival, Alaska Air, Carnival ADR, Delta, United, JetBlue. You know the first thing that stands out? That story is right. This industry is getting slaughtered. Every single stock is a sell recommended stock. So let's take a little twist on this, a little differently. Watch this. So in these travel stocks, we have an indicator that shows the stock's upside potential, right? Let's sort this list by RV. Now I'm giving you value plays in this industry. At the top of the list is Carnival. Why? RV on Carnival is at 1.74. This means that Carnival should outperform a AAA corporate bond by 74% over the next one to three years. How about uh, Carnival ADR? That's an uh, American depository receipt. How about Royal Caribbeans? Uh, undervalued. Both of these stocks are way under their values, good upside potentials. None of these are safe stocks, though, and none of these are really going up in price. So I'm making a little spin on this. If you're looking at which ones you'd like to look at, 
that are going to rebound nicely, that are good stocks to hold long term, Carnival may be one. Royal Caribbean may be one. Look at them. They're still growing their earnings at a clip of 16 and 18 percent a year. Alaska Air, an airline, 1.59 in relative value. Nobody else gives you that information to show you which ones are value plays because as big as they've been beaten up right now, I am now using that relative value indicator to give you stocks that look good for the long-term potential that are just getting beaten up right now. So I, I understand that the industry is being beaten up. The power of the VectorVest software, the power of this watch list is to now, how about you put some of these into a watch list, a different watch list, and wait for the right times to get into them. But these stocks have been beaten up so much by RT, uh, but I like many of them have double-digit earnings growth rates. That's not a bad thing. Some of these stocks are really good stocks, but they've been beaten up so much. How about Delta? It's got a relative safety above one. The only one that I see here as well as Southwest. How about some of the airlines have good safeties and good relative values? Keep your eyes on some of those stocks because it tends to happen. The industries that get beat up the most during these times tend to be the industries that re rebound the fastest. But now, guess what? Keep this in mind. Some of these stocks may be good stocks to keep your eyes on, just not the right time to buy. Any questions? Outstanding. All right, let's go back to our watch list. Those travel stocks, folks, mark my words, may be some of the hottest stocks after the coronavirus is done. Just keep that in mind. Write it down. Tom, write it down for everybody. Write it down in the room. This stuff really works. Watch uh, the travel stocks. Tell me when Tom puts that in the room. All right. Tom's going to put that in the room. All right, let's go to the next story. The next story, interesting, is how many people are hiring right now. So this story was of interest. Who's hiring amid the coronavirus layoffs? There's certain, there's certain companies that are hiring, um, and I wrote them down. Well, there was a listing of them. Well, I know which companies that are in here. I read the list, um, but it isn't just major retailers and healthcare giants hiring in the midst of the coronavirus, moving companies, food makers, and others say they need additional help too. So you know something, if many of you are still on furlough and you're looking possibly for another means of income while this is going on, there are companies out there that are hiring. So I put them into my watch list today. Hold on, let's go to our watch list. What am I looking for? I'm looking for Amazon is one that's hiring. They need workers, especially in their warehouses. Blue Apron, a hot stock right now, but they put out a lot of food. Today, it's moving down. All right, I think that's a lot of profit taking. I own it, and it's a lot of profit taking. It's down 7%, but if you look at this list that I have for today, it's the only buy recommended stock. Interesting, right? What else is in here? GE, um, Walmart is the one that's hiring. And Target is another one that's hiring. Where's that at? So here's my companies amongst, uh, amidst uh, what's going on with the coronavirus that are hiring folks. Uh, let's see. Apron is over its value. Target is under value. Walmart is over its value. Amazon is way over its value. And General Electric is above its value. Let's look at what stocks are moving up. There's Blue Apron. That's the stock that's moving up the most right now. And they're still, they're looking for help to put their packages together. All right, uh, what else is moving up? Walmart, RT is above one. Amazon is right at one. General Electric is not, but they're high. You know why General Electric is hiring? General Electric is hiring because they need to open up some factories for the uh, making of ventilators. So General Electric is definitely hiring as well. Let's look at these graphs real quick. All right, let's pump up the volume. How'd that go? Check that beat. I'm a, I'm a DJ. doesn't matter. Amazon, flattening out right now. All right. Um, you know, and it's interesting. As the coronavirus is still kicking in, it was still moving higher. Right now, flattening out, doing a little bit of sideways mumbo. Watch the volume. Now, this volume makes sense that it's moving down as the stock is moving sideways. All right. The stock is moving sideways, so volume, is that makes sense. But there's that level. There's a level of resistance sitting at 190, uh, 1994.68. I definitely would love to see that stock break above that. But they are looking for help right now. Who else? Blue Apron. I'm loving this stock. Uh, it's in one of my portfolios. The stock has made some money. Big down day today. 
But even on an end-of-day basis, I love that the three and the eight are still in play. I love that the earnings per share, which is negative, is getting less negativer. I like that. All right, over the last three months, volume has been pretty steady. Uh, I'd really like to see a pop like I did back here. But uh, I'm fine with that. But because I have stops on it, I let that stock be on an end-of-day basis. GE, the only good thing about happening with GE is that they are hiring because of ventilators. GE has been a stock that's been in a downtrend for a minute. It bounced off support, 3 and 8 crossed, and boom, got to a level of resistance and it's pulling back. I'm not going to touch GE right now. Walmart doing a little bit of sideways mama. Well, guess what? Everybody in the mama is going out to Walmart to get toilet paper and everything. Joey, you got my toilet paper at home? Oh, Joey's got plenty of toilet paper. So Joey says if you need toilet paper, give him a call. You got them? Yeah. I'll he got he's gonna He's going to email you some toilet paper if you need it. <laughs> wow. I don't know how that's going to quite work, but I'm leaving that to Joey. Right now, Walmart, nice up day today, right at a level of resistance, though. Right at a level of resistance. Let's see if it can break above that. But they are hiring right now. Look at this uptrend coming off of the low. I like that uptrend. Uh, let's see if we can break through that level of resistance. What else is here? Target. Man, Target's getting smoked, but they still are hiring people right now. They still are hiring people. You know what I like about when you go to Walmart nowadays? They set some carts in the middle so that you can take the ones that they already wiped down. So I think a lot of people are becoming very COVID-19 conscious when you even go to the stores. I'm seeing a lot of um, the shields up in front of the cashiers when you go to the stores as well. So everybody's trying to, to, to do their part to slow the spread. All right. So those are the stocks that we looked at of companies that are hiring right now. Joey, any questions? Nope. No questions. All right. Let's get into our last story. These are my stocks that caught my attention. Here we go. Ford, GE, plan to produce 50,000 ventilators in 100 days. That sounds like an, a very aggressive thing. But the president is asking a lot of these big companies, especially if they are assembly line people, to put these, to put these things together. Uh, Ford and GE are trying to produce 50,000 ventilators in 100 days. And one other thing, Virgin, uh, Virgin Orbit to begin mass producing ventilators. Ventilators are something that's needed. And I love that individual companies, big companies, are coming to the, are, are rising up to the call to start to build more ventilators. Any of you who are in New York, be super careful. I've got parents in New York right now um, that I'm very concerned about. Um, be careful with that. Um, and so I know ventilators are needed. I'm loving that these three companies, these three big companies, have got an aggressive goal to try to put out 50,000 ventilators in 100 days. That sounds like a very big goal, and I think they can make it. I think that they can make it. All right, let's go back to the watch list. And those are my three stocks, uh, uh, Virgin, GE, and Ford. Notice that all three of these are at the bottom of the list. All right, they're at the bottom of the list by my master indicator VST, but it looks like they're doing a lot. They will be doing a lot to try to get these ventilators up and running. Let's go look at their graphs real quick. And these are my stocks of interest, specifically because of what they're doing. Virgin Galactic moving down. Um, interesting that the companies, all the three of these companies, there's GE and there's Ford. All three of them are moving down, but they are coming to the forefront to build ventilators. So even if you don't invest in them as stocks, I think it's admirable, and that's why they were my stocks of interest. I think it's admirable that they're coming together to try to get those ventilators up and running. And actually, that's all of the stocks that I had on my watch list today. Um, keep your eye on some of those stocks. Blue Apron, uh, take a look at um, uh, Grubhub, take a look at Clorox, take a look at some of those stay-at-home stocks. And again, when Joey puts this video together, go get those watch lists. Take a screenshot so that you can build those watch lists. And again, for those of you who are not subscribers, sign up, take the trial for 30 days where you can use the power of the VectorVest watch list, which is unlike any other watch list that's out there. All right, I'm sitting right at 3 o'clock. So, a couple of things. One, um, to sign up or to register for the giveaway of the options course. And let me go to the homepage. Where's my homepage? Is it down here somewhere? It should be welcome. Oh, yeah. There it is. 
Uh, I want to show you what this is. This is the live stream to the Options Jump Starter course. All right, bless you. The live stream to the um, Options Jump Starter course. And I'm going to go right here to the Vector Vest catalog. I want to show you something, what this looks like. The Umptions Jump Starter course is normally $795. We've got it reduced down to $495 right here. What I'm giving away is this course, which is at $495. You're getting a $500 course for free if you win. So now, in order to win, in order to win, you have to type the word options into the comments. You have to type the word options into the comments. And in a minute, my page should start getting flooded with the word options. Out of all of the people who respond to that options, we're going to pick somebody up from there that's going to be able uh, to win a free options live stream. Good Lord. Of, good Lord, Joey. Holy, how much? Wow. All right, so... We're going to go through all of these. <laughs> We're going to go through all of these names. Just once, Jay. Just once, Jay. Stop it, Jay. No. And again, we're going to pick out the people who do it twice. You're going to get taken out. How about that? All right. So I'm telling you that ahead of time. If you do it more than once, you're going to get kicked out. So optionosity. Optionosity. Thank you, Jay. All right. So um, we're going to look at all of these people. Now Jay says, don't. Uh, we're going to look at all these people that responded. We will pick one. We will pick one to win the free options jump starter course. And you need to be here next week to see what, uh, who did. All right, you need to be here to see who did. And we'll start off next week's session with the winner. That's good, Jay? Uh, Joe, uh, Joey? All right, so make sure you're here. Now stop typing options. Stop it. Stop it. Excellent. Wow, that was awesome. Now, up, up, booping, up, stop, up, up, stop. And it comes with a roll of toilet paper, too. The course comes with a roll of toilet paper. All right. Now, this is what C Camellia says. Thanks in advance for, for teaching me options. Stop typing options. All right. Now, what I'm going to give you is the opportunity. Let's go look at some of your stocks. I'm going to try very hard to look at as many of them as I possibly can. Now start typing in your stocks you want me to look at. All right. <clears throat> start typing, not toilet paper. Stop, MR. Gush. Here we go. Gush, comma, AMD, comma, UWT, comma. Stop typing in the options. CSV. CSV. Go ahead. You keep going, Joey. Uh, Gush, Tesla, Stars. Stars? It's going so fast. I know it's going fast. STZ. STZ. Keep going. VIPS. Joey is going to stop when he wants to stop, so he's going to keep calling them off. GFI. Yep. OPGN. OPGN. OXY. OXY. QDEL. Yep. Okay. X. SPA. X. SPA. XPA. Yeah, that's what it says. XPA. X. XSPA. XSPA. Okay. EQX. EQX. Again, Joey, it's up to you to stop. Yeah. XOM. XOM. Um, AYTU. AYTU. Uh, UTX. UTX. Keep going. And VEX. VEX. AIM. Not VEX. Doesn't work. Okay. Here we go. AIM. AIM. And VJ. <laughs> v. V. Vector J. Okay. Uh, we don't we don't track that. All right, one more stock. Uh, let's see. I want to get something new. Okay. How about Posh P M A W? Okay. All right. Let's go take a look. Wow, that was a that was a lot of stocks. Now, for any Joey, put the link in there. All right. Stop typing in stocks. Stop. Wow, that works sometimes. Not a lot. All right. You're still typing in stocks. Stop typing in stocks. Joey's going to put a link in the room. That link is for anybody's stock that I miss. That is where you can get a free stock analysis report. Click on that link. You can put in any stock that you want to get a free stock analysis report on. All right. So, you know my layout. Let's go put this on a three-month graph. Gush. Man, oil moved today because Russia... What is it? Russia and the Saudis went to the table. They're sitting down to think about cutting production. 
and we'll see how that works out. But I'm not touching Gush right now. Look at that. Stock is just not moving. Not ready to touch Gush yet. I'd look for a different stock. Going to the next one. Next one is AMD. I like the bounce for AMD to 3 and 8 cross. Great opportunity to get in. Love the rising earnings. Right now, though, the stock is pulling back to 3 and 8 cross. I would wait on an end of day basis for the 3 to go back above the 8 before I pull the trigger. If I'm in it, I should have probably been out of it today. Now, you would say, well, I'm not going to get out of it today. The stock's price went back up. Ooh, look at that pullback. Look at the wick at the top of that candle. That's a lot of selling pressure. That's a lot of selling pressure. So just watch that um, going into that stock. Um, man, UWT, that's another oil. I'm not ready to touch that. Look at these bars. These bars are so small. All right, get these, these bars. Get Boris and Natasha to tell us about it. Natasha, we got to go buy the UWT. No, Boris, we're not going to buy that. Not today. So there's my Boris and Natasha. No more of that. All right, watch those. Watch those. Um, Watch those bars. CSV, carriage services, personal. You know something, and this is unfortunate to say, but funeral services, I don't think will ever go out of business because it's, people die every day. That's just the reality. But I'm looking at a three month graph. CSV is not doing something right. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but the stock's price is pulling back. It did bounce off support, 3.8 cross. Look at that big red arrow, big, big red bar. That happened to be a bearish engulfing pattern with follow through the 3.8 cross. I probably wouldn't be in it right now. If I'm trying to hold the stock to 3.8, end of day would get you out of the stock today. Would get you out of the stock today. Let's go. Someone says, is UWT still trading after today? I don't know. I looked at both of those stocks. Uh, I looked at both of those stocks, UWT. Those, I'm not really feeling either one of those stocks. All right, hey, Glenn, should we put the average volume line on the graph? We could, but right now I'm not going to do it. I got to get through these stocks, Jay. I got to get through these stocks. You gave me a lot. Tesla did bounce off support. Look at the 3.8. Look at the pullback right now. Uh, end of day basis, the 3 and the 8 cross yesterday, good time to get out of the stock, got to follow through today. I would definitely wait to see if the stock's price could go back above this level of moving sideways before I pull the trigger. All right, keep that in mind. If you're in it right now, whew, uh, you got to make a decision. Here's your deadline in the sand. If you really want to hold it beyond the stock's price, 3 and the 8 cross, here's my line in the sand. There's my line in the sand sitting at about 348.77. All right, that's a lot to give back, though. That's a lot to give back. I would rather you get out now, just in case the stock's price is going to go down, and wait for it to go back above this level of resistance. All right, next one, Stars, Castalian brand. Oh, food. Oh, man, it bounced, but look at that pullback. I do like that it's got a lot of buying pressure. Look at the wick at the bottom of the candle. The 3 and 8 did cross today on an end-of-day basis with a lot of volume. So a lot of people did get out of it. If you're in it, whew, the 3 and 8 crossed to the bottom today. You might want to think about getting out. Let's see if what happens tomorrow. If it's got another update tomorrow, maybe you stay in it. But I like if I'm going to get in on the 3 and 8 to get out on the 3 and 8 as well. I cannot add any new stocks. Anybody who's putting in new stocks, I cannot add any new stocks. I got a lot of stocks to get through. Vips, love the upturn on it, but watch this. All right, look at that move from the bottom. Look at that move from the bottom. What happened today? What happened today? It broke through that uptrend line. Let me make that a little darker. It broke through that uptrend line. That is an indicator that I'm not feeling it right now. There it is. There's that uptrend connecting the lows, broke through now, closed below, the 3 and the 8 haven't crossed yet. That's a preliminary indicator to think about getting out. That's an eliminated, that's a little bit of an indicator to think about getting out prior to the 3 and the 8. Learn to read graphs, folks. It will make a difference in how you manage your trade. Let's go to the next stock, uh, GFI. I like the bounce off support. I like the update today in the 3 and the 8 are about to cross. If you own this, look at this. One, two levels of resistance that it's got to break through. It's a lower dollar stock. Just keep that in mind. It's got two other levels of resistance. Once it breaks through this second level of resistance sitting at the price of 566, it's got some good upside. It's got some good upside, at least to that high. So keep that in mind. But right now, it's going through the waters of trying to break through two other levels of resistance. 
Nice update today. The three and eight are about to cross. I like both of those, but watch those two levels of resistance as well. OPGN, you done with OPGN? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know me. All right, watch the earnings per share. Earnings per share is lower than it was three months ago. The stock is moving a little bit sideways. Hasn't really bounced off of anything just quite yet. I know it's a lower dollar stock. I'm not ready to pull the trigger on it just quite yet. Look at the volume. Volume is conviction. I'm not very convicted with this stock. All right, a lot of sideways move. Not really convicted with this stock right now. Andy, the 3 and 8 moving averages, Septum, EMA, 3 and 8. They're already on here. I've got my 3 and 8 exponential uh, moving averages. And again, this is what I use um, to help me. To, and it does a really good job to keep you in a stock when you need to and get you out of the stock when it mean you need to as well. Occidental Petroleum, what's there to say about it? Uh, petroleum moved today. Nice up day. So let me give you something to look at. Right here, see that level? Good level of resistance. See that with the bodies? That's a level of $15.26. I would really love to see if that stock could break through that. And if it does, look at the upside it's got from there. All right, it's got a lot of good upside. If this is a good level of resistance, which it is, look at that, bounce down, bounce down, in the zone, bounce down, bounce down. That's a solid level of resistance that you really need to break through before you pull the trigger on it. This is a trade. If you got into it today, it's strictly a trade, but look at that level of 1526. Keep your eye on that level. Keep your eye on that level, all right? Let's go to the next one. Uh, QDEL, it did move up. The 3 and 8 haven't crossed bearish, but two solid uh, bear days out of the last four big candles. Love the pop in volume. Uh, it's pulling back. Make sure you have stops on it. The 3 and 8 haven't crossed, so if you're holding it end of day, you're still fine. Let the, let the trade come to you um, instead of jumping the gun and getting all scared. I do see the two big down days. But let the trade come to you. That 3 and 8 does a really good job to get you out at the right time. Steel, mm, moving down. Still, steel is moving down still. Woo! Look at that move. Big down day today. 3 and 8 haven't crossed. It did cross up. A little sketchy as far as the move. Love the volume. Don't like the earnings. Uh, but a down day today. Be careful if you own that stock. Definitely be careful if you own that stock. Let's go to the next one. XSPA. Express Spa, the telephone. Who are they? You know who they are? Who that right there? Who that is right there? Who that is? I don't know. Anyway, stocks price is moving down. You do have a solid low, a solid level in the sand right here at the low. I don't know who gave that to me. One, it's a 16 cent stock. Be careful with those. I know even in a trader's market, uh, e <coughs> excuse me, even in the trader's market, I would be very careful with your lower dollar, your, 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 you know, 16 cents. Uh, just, just be careful with that. And overall, the stock's price is moving down, all right? I'm not feeling that. Uh, let's go to the next one. I do like Equinox Gold. I like that move. Uh, moving up, it's approaching a level of resistance, which is sitting at the level of 769. You're only about 30 cents off of that. If it can break through that, it's got another level of resistance sitting at 902. You can make a little bit of money on that, all right? Especially if the dollar starts to weaken, people are going to start rolling into gold. That may not be a bad play. With all of that just going on, just keep your eye on the dollar, and gold will start showing its face once again, all right? So just keep that in mind. Somebody, Luke Skywalker's here. Hi, Luke. May the force be with you. All right. I love the earnings per share on Equin uh, Equinox Gold, too. Love the earnings per share. But right now, it's coming up to a level of resistance at 769. I'd really like to see if it can break through that first. Exxon Mobil, another petroleum stock coming off a level of support. Little sideways move up day. But look at the wick. Look at the wick. That's a lot of selling pressure even on today's candle. I do like that it's an open candle, but a lot of profit taking on because the stock's price went up. Just watch that. Love the volume, but there's a lot of volume with a lot of profit taking. Uh, earnings doesn't look all that hot. Um, just watch that stock. I'd really like to see if it's got the wherewithal to keep moving up tomorrow. But big wick at the top of the candle, a lot of profit taking. AYTU, drugs, biomedical, moving sideways. This is a coronavirus stock. I think that it's in um, the coronavirus watch list. A lot of sideways move right now. Let this stock get out of its own way. 
All right, let the stock get out of its own way before you pull the trigger on it. Unless you're a trader and you played it today as an update, that's fine. But this is a trade. This is definitely uh, a trade. All right, let's go to the next one. UTX. It's moving down. The 3 8 on an end-of-day basis closed lower yesterday. Earnings is moving lower. Volume is... Uh, it, I'm not feeling that. Look at the graph. The gra he, he, when you hear me say I'm not feeling that, it's not my opinion. I'm looking at the graph. The graph is telling you what you need to hear, not, not what you want to hear. And that's the difference. There's a difference in what you want to hear and what you need to hear. The graph is the DNA of the stock. All right? The graph tells a story. A story is worth a thousand words. It's what you do with that story that makes the difference in what you're going to do. That's the story right there. The stock's price is going down. The 3 and the 8 have closed on an end-of-day basis to the lowest side. Earnings is going down. That's the story. All right? What you do with it is what you do with it, but that is the DNA, the story behind the stock. AIM, another biomedical company, a little bit of a bounce. I've got a level of resistance sitting about 354. It's got to break through that before I feel more comfortable jumping on. I like the 3 and the 8. If I'm trading it, the 3 and the 8 are good. Listen, I'm still in it. Even with the down day yesterday, up the, uh, the down day two days before, uh, the up day yesterday, a little bit of a doji day today, but the 3 and the 8, if you bought it off the 3 and the 8, which would have been on 330, leave it alone. This is on an end of day graph, leave it alone. Let the trade come to you. And the last stock in here is PNAW. A little bit of a curving sitting sideways now. If you got in on the 3.8 cross, leave it alone because the 3.8 haven't crossed end of day to the downside yet. Once that happens, that's probably a good opportunity to get out of the stock. I do like the bounce. I do like the 3 and the 8. What I don't like, though, over the last three months, look at the earnings per share is moving down. Earnings is the engine that moves the stock's price higher. Stock is a sell. A lot of different things telling me that if I'm not in it, I don't want to be in it. If I'm already in it, let the trade come to you. Wait for the 3 and 8 to cross. Positive. Show us a graph of the stock you are feeling so we can see what a good one looks like. And the stock that I do like right now is a couple of them. Um, Apron is one. Um, uh, what was the other one? Grubhub is two. Clorox is three. Let's go take a look at some of those. Apron. Love the move on Apron. Now, keep in mind. One day doesn't make a trend. Look at the move. Look at the three and the eight. I like the sideways move. Where did it stop? Stopped right at the level of resistance. This is where I was making the money on the stock actually way back here as it started moving sideways. I like the earnings is getting better. I like the earnings is getting better. Volume is pretty moving sideways. The three and the eight are still in place. The three is above the eight. All right. So on an end of day basis, I still haven't closed out. And one day doesn't make a trend. What else do I like? I liked Grubhub with the exception of today. And probably because the 3.8 closed to the downside today, I'll probably pull the trigger and get out of it. All right, but prior to that, I did get in on the 3.8 cross, made a little bit of money. I'm probably going to be slightly down or flat on the trade. And then Clorox is another good one. Coming off a level of support, 3.8 crossed up. I own this one as well. Nice open candle. Love the, uh, love the, the earnings per share. But there's that bounce, three and the eight. Guess what? This one has a lot more upside. I've got no levels of resistance right near, right now until that level of the high, which is at sitting at 214.26. I like that trade. And even on a day like today, very little wick at the top, but nice open candle. All right. So um, there you go. For everyone who was asking about stocks that I did like, those are three. Um, that I am sort of kind of partial to because I do I am currently trading them. Uh, I'm going to put up one other one. Since gold wants to make a move, all right, let's go take a look at one other one. Um, JNUG. Wow, I'm not feeling that right now. Gold wants JNUG is a stock that had been rising, but I'm not feeling it right now. Look at that on a three month basis, not feeling that. So there you go. Uh, could you please send out the email reminders a lot earlier in the day? My bad. I almost missed this because email came in about eight minutes to one. Um, uh, that's the time that we're supposed to put them in so that you will know just, uh, just about when it's supposed to happen. That's the purpose of the, um, the, the alert is to let you know just before so that you can be right here. Just do that. All right. With that. 
All right, with that, I'm done for the day. Thank you all for being here. We had a lot of people in the room. Uh, remember, make sure that you're here next week. Make sure you're here next week so that we can uh, let you know, disclose who the winner of the Options Jumpstarter course is. Um, and there you go. If you know people who are interested in the market, share this with them. Have them subscribe to the page. And you know something? I look at all of the people who watch these videos. I've got more unsubscribers to the page than subscribers. You guys who like this content, subscribe to the page, folks. So just subscribe. All right? Just hit the big red subscribe button right below the video. Just do that. You're here every week anyway, right? Just please subscribe to the page. With that, folks, I'm done for the day. Thank you for being here. Adios, arrivederci, ciao, au revoir, sayonara, peace.